for an attorney or for just a property owner, I think a lot of times people don't even realize that this, this body of law exists. Maybe when you own your first home or you get your first survey, you start to realize how important boundaries can be. My name is Jessica Shrestha. I'm an attorney at Wheeler, Van Sickle and Anderson. That's here in Madison, Wisconsin. The concept of adverse possession is that, well, first you start, everyone has uh, a deed to their property. There's a legal description, there's a boundary, whether it's a lot or, or something else, you know, specific distances, and that's your boundary. But as everyone knows, it's hard to figure out where those are, and a lot of times actual occupation on the ground doesn't necessarily match the real boundary lines. You know, sometimes it's a matter of a few inches, but sometimes it gets to be, you know, we're talking feet, acres, a whole 40-acre parcel sometimes. And it turns out that if you occupy and use an area of property for long enough and treat it as your own property, the doctrine of adverse possession makes that your property by law. It's more complicated exactly how that applies, but that's the basic concept. Over time, property can become yours even if you don't have a deed that describes it. Adverse possession comes up um, most often for a typical property owner with a fence. That's really the classic example and that has been for as long as we've had you know, real property and, and the law of adverse possession. Someone will construct a fence and you know, even if they get a survey to tell them exactly where the property line is, they might construct their fence a foot inside their property. They want to make sure they can stay on the other side, for example or a foot on the other side. Sometimes it's a greater distance. And over time, they forget. Or maybe they didn't know where the exact boundary was in the first place, and that fence might become the boundary by, by operation of adverse possession. Same thing goes with lines of trees and hedges, um, or even people might place a shed on a neighbor's property. And that's in a city lot. Um, the same thing, though, can happen with pasturing cattle or with fences for cropland. When a client or a potential new client comes to me and they think they have a boundary dispute or maybe an adverse possession situation, to start, I think the easiest way to think about it is you have to ask the, the basic questions. The who, what, when, where, why, and how. You know, the who is really important. Who are the parties involved? And with adverse possession, it's not going to just be the current property owner necessarily. You know, do you have a governmental entity? Who owned that property 20 years ago? The what? What sort of property is involved? Is it hunting property, a city lot? Those are important uh, things to know about property and deciding if you have adverse possession. When? Are we talking 20 years of adverse possession? Was it occupied between 1930, 1950? What time period? Uh, where? How much property is involved? What is the actual boundary line that's in dispute? And, and why? There is a recent case, again, Wilcox versus the state of Hines, that told us it is important why, why you were possessing the property. Did you intend to possess it? Was it with the permission of the, the true owner? Did you think it was your property? And then very importantly, how? What were your acts of possession that constitute adverse possession? When I have all of that information, I sit down and I think, does this equal adverse possession? I compare it to the case law. And then I start to think about possible defenses and uh, different related doctrines maybe that could come into play, such as the doctrine of acquiescence or, or easements. Attorneys should know that the statute isn't going to answer their question in most cases. You need to look at the entire body of law that has developed over time. The adverse possession statutes actually codify the common law, and so there are different elements even in the cases than ours are listed even in the statute. So the elements of adverse possession are continuous, exclusive, open and notorious, and hostile possession, whereas there is no reference of most of those terms in the statutes themselves. Attorneys also need to know that you shouldn't just look at either the first case or even the last case. It's been um, a long and complex doctrine that has evolved over time. And, and a good place to start is probably the latest case, but there are plenty of cases from over a hundred years ago that I still reference and that are still relevant good law that, that you will need to be aware of. Part of why I wrote my article is sometimes it's really hard to find a good summary of adverse possession law. Um, a lot of the, the treatises will have it, but that's on a nationwide basis. And our state, along with a lot of other states, have has developed the law in its own way. So I think the best way to sort of follow along and know what you should be looking at is to just go through the cases. You're gonna to have to do 
your case law research. Um, hopefully my article will give you a good starting point, but from there you just have to get into the topic.